So 1.5 is investments involving regular payments, and that's on pages 46 to 57 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is the same. It's to demonstrate understanding of financial decision-making, including analysis of renting, leasing, and buying credit compound interest investment portfolios. Our lesson objectives today is number one, to be able to understand the concept of an investment in which you make a regular payment. Number two, to be able to develop and use a formula for finding the future value of an investment when you are making regular payments. And number three, to be able to answer various questions regarding investments that involve regular payments. So a common way that people try to save money is by taking a portion of each paycheck, placing it into a savings account that will earn them interest. So say you're going to try and put away $300 every month. Um, then you just take that out of every paycheck, you put it in an account, and it just builds interest. For simplicity's sake, we're going to assume that the interest will be calculated every time you put money into the account. So if you're putting money into the account um, every month, then the interest is being calculated monthly. So i.e. you won't be placing money into the account monthly and have the interest being calculated semi-annually. As for the development of the prior formulas, we're going to first do a specific example the long way and then develop an easy to use formula for finding out how much money's in the account after you've put in the same amount of money over a period of say 10 years or 15 years, etc. So here's an example. It says, how much money would you have in an account if you were to deposit $500 at the end of each year for a total of four years with an annual interest rate of 3.4% compounded annually? So if you did like a little number line, um, you're going to put in at time zero, you're not going to put in any money. At the end of the first year, you're going to put in 500 bucks. At the end of the second year, you're going to put in 500 bucks. At the end of the third year, you're going to put in 500 bucks. And at the end of the fourth year, you're going to put in 500 bucks. Now, each of these things is going to uh, be multiplied by that interest rate. But this first 500 is going to be multiplied by the interest rate m numerous times because it's in the account the most. And this last one isn't going to be multiplied by any interest rate because you're putting it in at the end of each year, which is the way banks do things. So our last one, even though it gets an interest rate of 3.4%, it doesn't get multiplied by... Um, by 1.034 that's why the exponent here is zero and so we just get 500 bucks the time before that this one right here it's going to be in the bank and it's going to get 1.034 uh, multiplied by it so it actually ends up being 517 dollars the one before that that's one right here it gets interest multiplied by it twice so that makes it 500 times 1.034 squared and we end up with $534.58. And the last one is going to get interest uh, calculated three times. And so that ends up making you $552.75. So when we multiply all these things together, or sorry, add all these things together, we get a total of $2,104.33 $2 in that account. So in this scenario, you put in a total of $2,000, so 500 four times and you actually end up making $104.33 in interest. So had you been able to invest that $2,000 right off the beginning for the four years, you would have actually made $2,000 times 1.034 raised to the power of four, and you would actually make $2,286.19. Now, the only reason that people don't do this is because they don't have the $2,000 right off the bat. They do, however, maybe they can afford to put in $500 every time um, at the end of every year, at the end of every month. So actually, had you had the money, the $2,000, you would have made $181.86 more. So here we are, we're gonna develop the formula. So we could have written the last example out like this. So your amount in the account is 500 plus 500 times 1.034 plus 500 times 1 plus 0 0.034 squared, etc., etc., etc. We could have written that out. And so what we're going to do is create a formula, and we're going to start with this in mind. So we're going to be doing it for, it doesn't matter how many times the interest is calculated, so we're going to use all these variables instead. So we still have A, that's our amount in the account. And now we will have R, because that's the regular amount that you put in each, each time. And then we have R times 1 plus I. And then we have R times 1 plus I. Uh, raised to the power of 2 and that goes on and on and on all the way to the fact that we get r times 1 plus i to the power of now if we're talking about n times that this interest is being calculated um, this is uh, 
a value of 1, this is a value of 2, this is a value of 0, so this is actually a value of n minus 1. So if it was 10 times, you would actually have 10 terms here. However, um, this one doesn't get an exponent, so it's always one less, if that makes sense. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 1 plus i. And we're doing that for a reason, and hopefully you'll understand that reason in a second. So now the second equation actually becomes a times 1 plus i. And then we have r times 1 plus i. And then we're going to take this thing and multiply it times 1 plus i. And what ends up happening is that we get r times 1 plus i squared. Over here, we get r times 1 plus i cubed all the way down the line to, to where we get r times. Now, if we multiply this thing by another 1 plus i, this actually becomes 1 plus i raised to the power of n. So now we have these two equations. Now what we're going to do, and this seems a little arbitrary, but we can always add and subtract equations as long as we add the left-hand sides or subtract uh, and add and subtract the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second equation and I'm going to subtract equation number one. So if that's equation number one, that's number two, I'm going to subtract them. So what happens is I get a times one plus i minus a from the first equation. And then, if you follow along, every time that I take this and I subtract from the other equation, this and this cancel out. And then this and this cancel out. So all the way down the line, these terms cancel out until we get to this last term. So the term before this would be r times 1 plus i to the n minus 1. So it's canceling out with that one. So what I end up getting is r to uh, multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of n right here subtract the only term that didn't get cancelled out on the top one is this r and so now I've taken this whole thing with an infinite amount of terms and I've been able to narrow it down to something that looks like this and this is something that we can work with so what we're gonna do is just take out a greatest common factor here and that's gonna be a so I'm still left with 1 plus i and since I took this a out I am left with a 1 I'm going to do the same thing here with the r, and then I still have 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1. Can I dot the i? There we go. And now 1 plus i minus 1 is just i, and over here I get r and 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1. And I can divide both sides by i, and I get our new formula r times 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1, all divided by i. And this is a formula that will help us out a lot. So let's get back to that first example we did. So how much money would we have in an account if we were to deposit $500 at the end of each year for a total of four years with an annual interest rate of 3.4% compounded annually? Then we're going to add on a little bit. And how about after eight years if it's compounded semi-annually? So we have our new formula. A is equal to R, and then 1 plus I to the power of N minus 1, all over I. So when we plug in the right numbers, R is that regular payment, that's what R stands for, and that's 500. And then we have 1 plus 0 0.034, and that's raised to the power of 4, because it's over 4 years. And when we plug this into our calculator, and I would do this in working from the inside out. So 1.034 raised to the power of 4. Subtract 1 from that. Multiply that thing by 500. And then divide by 0 0.034. And we get exactly what we got before when we did it all step by step. And that's $2,104.33. So we don't actually have to do it the long way anymore. Because when we get to a question like the second part, if we're actually going for eight years compounded semi-annually, that means we would have to do 16 different calculations and add them all together. So the beauty about this formula is we don't have to do that. We just put the numbers into the formula. So we get 1 plus 0. Point. Now, half of 3.4, because it's semi-annually, half of 3.4 is 0. 0.017. And eight years compounded semi-annually means that there's going to be 16 calculations being made. And that means we also have to remember to divide this i in the bottom. It also gets divided by 2, so that's 0 
So in the end, when you use your calculator, figure that all out, you will get 9105 and 58 cents. So here's our second and final example. It says Jamie wants to have $400,000 in her account in which to live off of after she retires in 25 years. She found a trust account that has an annual interest rate of 9.6% compounded semi-annually. How much money does she need to deposit each term in order to reach her goal of $400,000? And how much interest will she actually make this way? So again, our new formula. Now we know the final amount this time, so that's 400,000. We are looking for the regular payment that she's gonna need to make to get to that 400,000. So here we have one plus now. We've got 9.6% compounded semi-annually. So we take 9.6% divided by two and we get 4.8%, so that's 0 0.048. Semi-annually means that there's gonna be calculated 50 times. So that's one plus 0 0.048 the power of 50 and then we still have 0 0.048 here now what I'm gonna do is just manipulate this thing so I can just use my calculator in one step so what I do is I'll multiply both sides by 0 0.048 and I'm gonna divide both sides by this chunk here that's on the top so I get 400,000 I'm gonna multiply that by 0 0.048 and I'm gonna divide by 1.048 raised to the 50th power minus one. That's gonna give me R. And when I do all that, I find that the regular payment is actually $2,037.20. So every half a year for the next 25 years, Jamie just needs to deposit $2,037.20, sorry, into her account. Now, it says how much interest will she make this way? Well, she's gonna make 50 deposits of $2,037.20. Which means that she is gonna deposit, over the course of 25 years, she's gonna deposit $101,859.86. That means that she, the amount of money that's in the account is 400,000, so she makes an awful lot on interest. So 400,000 minus 101, 85986 leaves you with 2981401 and 14 cents. So $298,000 and $140, sorry, and 14 cents is how much money she makes just on interest. If you're lucky enough to find a 9.6% interest rate compounded semi annually. So in summary, when someone makes a regular payment into an account, we can use the following formula that we developed that A, the amount in the account is equal to your regular payment multiplied by one plus your interest rate to the power of N minus one, all divided by your interest rate. So note, the only variable that you can't solve for in this equation is I, because I is in two places, one inside the brackets to raise the power of N and the other one underneath in the denominator. So don't attempt any questions from the assignment that ask you to actually find the interest rate. So your assignment is on pages 53 to 57. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.